Okay, so following Bohr's uh, experimentation with different spectra and his big discovery that every element has a unique spectrum, uh, a new analytical scientific technique was born. So basically, as a technique that allowed scientists to identify different substances based on their spectrum. Okay, here's how it worked. We all know already, we've seen this already, that if you have a white light source, so this is a white light source, something like the sun or, you know, there's artificial lamps you can buy that will do this. But if you have a white light source and you pass it through a triangle shaped piece of glass called a prism, we know that the light will bend and it will produce something like this. Okay, so this here is a prism. It bends the light and you produce this. This is a continuous spectrum. I'm just gonna move it a little bit so it's not all the way down there by itself. But yeah, this is a continuous spectrum. We know that this is a continuous spectrum. Oh, that wasn't very successful. We know that this is a continuous spectrum because it's got all bands of color. It's got all the colors included. It's not got any gaps in it. So that's why it's continuous. So it's got the, all the frequencies of light. So a rainbow will be a classic example of a continuous spectrum. But this is what we get when we pass a white light source through a prism. We get a continuous spectrum. So there's nothing new there. But what, following what Bohr had discovered, the next step then was to realize, well, what happens if we take that white light and we put something in its way? We put a gas, an elemental gas in the way. So let's say we had a container containing hydrogen gas and we put it in the way of the white light source. So the white light has to pass through the hydrogen gas before it gets to the prism. Well, remember what's going on here. Remember what Bohr's idea was. Here is a, a nucleus, and here is the energy levels around the nucleus. And if we're talking about hydrogen, well, then we know that the electron is normally in the lowest available energy level. So that's this first one. This is the N equals one energy level. And I know it should be there because um, it, there's, there's no other electrons there. So we say that the, the energy level is available. The electron can go in here. So normally it's in the lowest available energy level. But the white light source is a source of energy. And if the white light shines through the hydrogen, then the electron can absorb that energy. So if the electron is going, it will absorb the energy from the white light, what's it gonna do? It's gonna jump or transition to a higher energy level. And when it did this, it had to actually remove some of the light, it had to take in some of the energy. So the white light source is putting out all this energy, all these colors down here in the continuous spectrum. Each one of those uh, separate shades represent a specific amount of energy. And what we just know is that actually we put the hydrogen in the way, some of that energy is going to get absorbed by electrons. And when this happens, the light that goes, comes out on the other side in the spectrum, well, it's missing a band of color. So this black line here shows that actually this particular frequency of light was absorbed. It was absorbed by an electron up here. Okay, so it had to absorb energy. Now let's say uh, it was a different um, electron. Let's draw another electron. And this electron, the blue one, it went to the N equal to two energy level. So it had to absorb uh, energy of a different frequency. It had to be a different frequency because it got it to the N equal. This is N equal to three energy level, not N equal to two like the previous one. Okay, so this had to be a different amount of energy. So we might see another black band down here. So we say again, energy was absorbed. Okay, so this gives us a third type of spectrum. So far, we've seen a continuous spectrum and we've seen an emission spectrum. This one is a different kind of spectrum. This is a colored background 
with black lights where the light is actually missing. It's been absorbed. And because the light has been absorbed, this is typically called an absorption spectrum. The absorption spectrum is different from the emission spectrum because it's a color background with black lines, whereas the emission spectrum is a black background with colored lines. Okay, and essentially, uh, what scientists then did is they put all of this into one, oh, sorry, all of this into kind of one machine. So one machine does all of this stuff. And they called that box that has all this equipment in it, the atomic absorption, absorption spectrometer. Okay. The atomic absorption spectrometer and the spectrometer was able to measure the specific frequencies of light what frequency exactly is this line that's missing uh, and that's what it could do uh, and obviously again every element is going to have a unique atomic absorption uh, sorry uh, is going to have a unique absorption spectrum so this helps you to identify what elements might be present somewhere Let's read a little bit about this here. Okay, we're starting here. It says, a device known as atomic absorption spectrometer was developed to it, white light, to use it, sorry, white light is passed through a gaseous sample of an element. Certain frequencies of light are missing from the light that emerges on the other side of the sample, resulting in dark lines in the spectrum. So here we see the dark lines in this spectrum. So you've got white light, but some of the freak, some specific frequencies have been absorbed by the gas sample. Now, what I want you to notice here is how these two things are for the same element, the emission at, at spectrum and the absorption spectrum for the same element. Look here at how the lines correspond. Okay, so exactly there, look. Exactly there and exactly there. So the colored lines in the emission spectrum correspond to the black lines, the absorption spectrum. So this is telling us this is the exact same element. Uh, so where are we yet? So these dark lines correspond exactly to the colored lines in the emission spectrum. The dark lines are due to the electrons in the element absorbing certain frequencies of light when they become excited. In green here, this is what an atomic absorption spectroscopy can be used for. This is often shortened to AAS, atomic absorption spectroscopy. Okay, that's what AAS stands for. And the use is in green here. I suggest that you add that to your dictionary uses of atomic absorption spectroscopy. It's able to identify specific substances in samples. So for example, it's used to detect the presence of certain elements, for example, lead or chlorine, if you're testing water samples, okay? So if you wanna know if water is polluted with metals such as lead, or if there's too high of a level of chlorine in water, or even if you wanna detect if there's uh, drugs in a blood sample. So if you wanted to test an athlete's blood to see if they've been taken drugs, this is how you would do it, using atomic absorption spectroscopy. How does it work? So again, this is another definition. What principle does atomic absorption spectroscopy work on? Works on the principle that atoms of elements absorb a particular wavelength of light. That's what it's based on. Okay, so atoms of any particular element absorb a particular wavelength of light, and it's unique to that element. It can also measure the concentration, in other words, how much of these elements, based on the principle that the amount of light absorbed by an element is proportional to its concentration. What that really means is the more of the substance that there, the more light will be missing. Okay, so it can, uh, the spectrometer can measure this. All right, so we've got two things here, the uses of the spectrometer, uh, that's the uses in green, and then the principles on which it can work. So these are the two principles. All right, once you've, uh, once you've uh, got those down, then you're ready to answer some of these questions. So we're doing 218 down to uh, 223. Uh, and this obviously A refers to this one and B refers to this one. 
All right, so you, oh, and this should, sorry, this should not say 32, this should say 218, okay? All right, so uh, again, you can follow along in the booklet if you want them questions. If you don't have the booklet, if you're not in my class, you can pause it and do these questions. And I'll see my gang in class next day. We'll go through these.